What is up ladies and gentlemen Skibidi fans? And Skibidi Toilet is a series that blew up the internet. But much mysteries surround this series with a lingering uneasiness that some cannot wrap their heads around with. Many hidden details even ones that can be totally insignificant can cause brainstorms. We'll be exploring and try to make some sense of such details, as some of them are really interesting. So sit back and relax, while we begin the examination. But firstly keep in mind that most of us analysts keep theorizing about this stuff, and probably we're overthinking way more than even Dafuk himself. But I digress. Let us begin. Firstly, where are the humans? As we know, everyone who listens to the Skibidi theme gets turned into a toilet. We've seen many cameos and even governmental figures getting turned. In early episodes cameramen and titan speaker man had human features. This can mean that they were once human, and to escape the Skibidi conversion, they had to chose their factions. If you're something else, you cannot turn into a Skibidi. But it can also mean that these were simply the early models of the characters of when Daffet made them. Whatever the case, we've seen the fights taking place in various parts of the world. Not a single human to be seen. Except, for the agent. I wonder if the humans will somehow return in the future. As far as we know, the Alliance members may have once had human-like features, but it is very clear now that they are robots. If we take in consideration the theory of the parallel universes of Male 09 and Male 07, it means it's all a chess game. But notice how Male 09 has a brown outfit, almost the same as Simp Camera Man. Very suspicious, if they themselves got turned. What sort of rabbit hole are we going to get into? Secondly, can Titan Camera Man turn Berserk? If you don't know what it means here's the context. Berserk is a state of mind when the rage emotion takes over. This person is then blinded by it, completely controlled by raw strength and destructive impulses. And we have seen this, in episode 66, the two camera men receive the Skibidi message about the Titan's defeat, their heads start shaking, they turn Berserk and start running through the battlefield with their bare hands, in a murdering rampage. In episode 58, Titan speaker man head shakes a swell, as he blasts his speakers shouting in rage at the Skibidi for having infected him. So imagine Titan camera man in this situation, of course he was in episode 67, but it's not that effective when you're literally falling apart. But remember episode 65, that was pretty brutal with the fake G-man, and that seemed he was fighting normally, not really angered. Goodness. Kinda scary to imagine. <coughs> Turdly, what the heck is this thing? It's so weird I couldn't even think of another description. I even asked the community on this matter. So in episode 51, Titan Cameraman is fighting his way through hordes of Skibidus in a now ruined New York City. But at the end we can see, this thing. At first I thought it was another Titan Cameraman's head because we can see the red laser and the circle insignia, the same ones we see on Titan. Then I thought it was some random street with a red street light. But it actually part of the flying Skibidi. We can see here that he has it on its wings. But why is it the same mark as Titan's? We seen that scientist Skibidi replicates steels and mimics the Alliance weapons and such. But remember here we are in episode 51, Titan just came out of the base upgraded, there simply was no time for the Skibidi to mimic it that fast. Some mentioned it's simply a Gmod asset, but Dafak uses many other wing shaped assets that have no symbols on them, and even if that was the case, he would go ahead and cover them. Dafak is very exquisite in the details. Very interesting. This actually ties in with our fourth point. This Skibidi's name is, Flying Quad Launcher Skibidi Toilet. Or if you want an extended name, Mechanical Jet Plane Rocket Airborne Wearing Red Lens Fast Eternal Dystopian Black Surging Android Soaring Toilet. Try to say this in one go. And if we examine it it's so far the most resistant Skibidi Toilet. Maybe even more physically resistant than G-Man or Scientist. With these two we can see the damage dealt, but with this one? It was actually one that did offer a challenge to Titan Cameraman. He can withstand the Titan's arm cannon, he can even survive Titan's core attack. If this guy was unflushable like Decoy G-Man, we can assume that he would be pretty much invincible. Very intriguing. Maybe he's been using BU Line Cream for a while or something. 
I can't be hurt. Be a lean. This is also the first and only time we saw a skibidi this enduring and with camera men symbols on it. It's also very uniquely designed. It may even be an astro, giving it has this headpiece here, similar to the astro assailant. It's also not using a jetpack to fly, and dodges titan attacks like astro does, although it does not have forever spinning components, and it's also flushable, distancing it from the astro a little. Even so, why and how come he has cameraman, specifically titan symbols on it? Was this used to represent its endurance? Titan cameraman is insanely tanky, but so am I, so I'm gonna cosplay his image. What a flipping mystery. Fifthly, what happened with glitch toilet? So I've touched on this topic before, although unknown its origins might be linked to scientist. But the fact scientist didn't replicate its abilities. Well, there's two options I can see here. 1. Scientist luckily created it. Or 2. It created itself. Weird right? Scientist could have been experimenting with the skibidi, mixing electricity with toilets. All the test subjects failed and died, except for one. That turned out rogue and kinda crazy. His experiments were much more successful with the skibidi hybrid so he gave up on creating glitch toilets, as the probability of success was very low when compared with the hybrids. Burglitch could also have created itself accidentally. You know in Spider-Man when Max falls in the eel tank. He does not die, but becomes a letro. Other people would have just died. Something of the sort could have happened here. It's a very rare occurrence when something incredible happens. Sixthly, Daffock Culture released her eggs. This one is not really a secret, but it's nonetheless wholesome. As many of you might know, Daffock is Russian. And he implemented some Russian aspects in the series. On a side note it actually works really well for the Skibidi faction. I'm talking about the Matryoshka dolls, aka Russian dolls, Babushka dolls or stacking dolls. They are figures that can split top from bottom, to reveal a smaller figure of the same sort inside, which has in turn another figure inside of it and so on. Daffok saw this and thought, let's use it in fake G-Man and maybe other Skibidi to turn them even more dangerous. An outer layer is definitely very useful to tank damage. Pretty neat. Seventhly, what's up with Plunger Man Blue Glow? Back in episode 51, we saw that Plunger Man flew with Titan, everything's nominal so far. But right in the next episode he has a blue light glowing out of his lower camera piece. Was it because he was exposed to Titan Cameraman? Titan Cameraman has a lot of blue glowing components. Titan Speaker Man spends a lot of time with his bro, and he's not glowing blue, maybe because he's a speaker not a camera. Camera Woman also has a bluish camera. Ah yes, of course, for this we shall look at how surveillance cameras work. Surveillance cameras with blue lenses are typically equipped with infrared cut filters. These filters are designed to improve the quality of images captured in both daylight and low light conditions. So they change, in daytime the filter is engaged, and disengaged at night time. The blue tint in the lenses may be a result of the specific materials used in the filter. Some materials can have a bluish tint, and this doesn't affect the camera's functionality during the day or night. It's worth noting that not all surveillance cameras have blue lenses, but in this case yes. Although it is night time as well in episode 51. Maybe he just forgot to turn the filter on with all the epicness that was going on. Ha 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 he's so abstracted. And I have the honor to have him as a guest. In fact the other way around. He's got the honor of being here with me okay irrelevant. Welcome plungers. Bro don't call me plungers. It's plunger cameraman. Or if you want a longer name. Dual wielder glitch plunger black assassin cameraman. Oh. Um. Right. Plunger cameraman. So what are your thoughts about your future in the series? Okay, hi dudes. I'm no genius, but I might be heavily injured due to the events that happened in episode 67. My dudes cameraman and speaker man also got their butt kicked hard, but we always kick harder in the end. Damn right. So, anyways, I really want to continue on this series, so I hope Alexi doesn't get rid of me. But I mean, you saw that, right? Bloody scientist just blasted me with his laser and probably destroyed my dear glitch mobile. I just hope we can all come back nice and repaired. Talking about the glitch mobile, 
How do you feel about it potentially being damaged or destroyed? I mean, it, it adds some sentimental value, I gotta be honest. When you've been holding on to it for so long, you grow attached to it. Plus, wasn't it TV woman who got this for me? Like a gift? A present? And why me of all dudes? She totally into me, isn't she? Do you know something about it? What? Well, I'm... I, I don't. I just... I mean, it's not just in Just forget my... it, bro. I guess it just comes naturally. I'm gonna keep performing heroic deeds. Bye-bye. Oh dear. Who's gonna tell him? That elite cameraman is into her? What? No. Oh, is it about the other dude? No. What other dude? It's complicated. Or is it about that she's 12? No. I mean the fact that machine's not having any feelings. We're in Daffix's head. Anything's possible. You're right. But while we're in that topic, is TV Woman really 12? It's something so many have doubts about it. But let's explore that, shall we? The age of a TV is subjective and depends on various factors, including its technology, condition, and your personal preferences. If a TV is 12 years old, it likely uses older display technologies such as LCD or plasma, as newer technologies have become more prevalent in recent years. So it all depends on connectivity, smart features, wear and tear and technology. Fascinating, but in that case, wouldn't that mean that TV woman is actually mature? Well, technologically speaking yes. Ultimately, whether a 12-year-old TV is too old depends on your specific requirements and how well the TV meets them. If you find that the TV no longer meets your needs, it might be worth considering an upgrade to a newer model with the features and technologies you desire. An upgraded TV woman, oh man, wouldn't it increase the sentence to a whole other level? I swear, where do I even get my sweet patience from? Anyways, what's up with the undead skibbity? As we saw in episode 55, the skull skibbity, or radioactive skibbity, teleported to the battleground. Now many people actually pointed this out in the Astro Toilet video, with good reason. It's sometimes difficult to know when the smoke is from the destruction or from the teleportation, as they use the same assets. But in here he clearly teleported. There's this theory in the community that the scientist actually teleports the skibidi from the base into the battlefield. This kinda makes sense because we saw various times that some skibidi are actually disposable, and it was at this moment that the skibidi discovered the cameraman weakness. The acid. Well I mean, everyone calls it acid, but notice this is a radioactive symbol, so this may be at least nuclear fuel or nuclear waste. So either scientist teleported it from the base, or it teleported itself. The fact that it's a skeleton it means that this is some sort of necromancy, and the undead are bound to the caster, scientist in this case. Bending its will. Automatically it would do whatever it's told to, with or without powerful abilities, such as teleportation. Ninthly, the TV dilemma. It's too soon to know the TV's hidden agenda, everyone in the community has their own opinions about it. Like the axolotl who kinda sparked an intriguing thought, and I'm not talking about the TV Alliance dilemma, but the TV's Daffok and the audience dilemma. If Daffok chooses to make them the next villain's arc, what would be the risks? I mean why in Skibbity Heaven would he give us warnings? He's literally shoving them up in our faces, in the series, in his merch store, that something really shady is going on in the TV faction. But the TV faction is loved by the community because they are good and capable. And really hot. And turning them into the bad guys would be an amazing plot twist yet risky move. As it may have significant implications for the overall success and reception of the series. Like audience displeasure and impact on the box office. Losing a popular character may result in decreased box office performance. Although it's highly improbable cause skippity toilet audience is a damn strong and sturdy audience and thus fan backlashing. Despite these risks, there are instances where killing off a beloved character or turning them into a villain can be a powerful storytelling tool, if done thoughtfully and in a way that serves the overall narrative. It is important to consider the potential consequences and weigh them against the creative and thematic goals of the series. And tenthly, could the TV use parasites on the skibidi? I guess the previous video about the TV's mysteries is missing the cherry on top. 
a very interesting ability that TV woman uses often. She hacks the skibidi, not with the purple bluish screen, but with her own head. It's overlooked at first because she uses it ever so often, but that is maybe what causes the illusion. Because if we really think about it, this is incredibly significant. The fact that a TV has the exact same ability of the parasite skibidi. The color of the skibidi faction is yellow. When someone not of the skibidi faction gets infected, their cores glow yellow, and blue electricity starts flowing through their bodies. When TV woman infects a skibidi the same electricity flows through their components. We don't know TV woman backstory, and why she has a detachable head out of all the other TVs so far. But if we, head, to the wiki, it's stated that is indeed a parasitic claw. She infects her victims and binds them to her will. Now I'm gonna say this is actually a unique feature among the TV faction that only TV woman possesses, because otherwise the skibidus would lose very quickly if the TV were to physically deploy mind control, like ranged weapons, or TV mind control drones, instead of just doing it telepathically. Can you imagine TV woman taking control of speakers and cameras? Skibidi knows what happened in the behinds of Titan Speaker Man. She might have just override Speaker Man's parasite with her own parasitic ability, but I digress. But just by looking at the brand new Cinema Man alone, we've seen only half of the iceberg of their tech. And with that one we're wrapping up. Thanks for watching everyone. Leave your thoughts and ideas down below so we can get to the bottom of these ever so curious finds. I've been Lundra featuring TS, TC and Plunger Man. And I'll see you in the next video.